Kofi Annan is standing down from his role as Syria envoy, blaming finger-pointing and name-calling at the UN Security Council. Annan's been the key figure in the international hopes to negotiate a diplomatic solution to the crisis in the stricken country. Let's get live comment now from our New York correspondent, Anastasia Cherkina. Anastasia, hi. Um, how does Annan explain his decision to resign? It's happened in the last few hours. Bring us up to date. Kevin, uh, Kofi Annan, the UN Special Envoy to Syria, is in fact resigning officially. This resignation will uh, be finalized at the end of the month on August 31st when his mandate expires. We have to remember, of course, that the Nobel uh, Peace Prize laureate was uh, recruited by uh, Ban Ki-moon, UN Secretary General, around six months ago to join uh, the uh, team of countries working and trying to resolve this conflict and the United Nations to be the key mediator in solving, attempting to solve the Syrian crisis. Crisis. But because of the intricacies of the, co of the conflict itself unraveling on the ground for the last 17 months, as well as the conflicting positions of members of the United Nations Security Council, UN experts have been uh, dubbing his role in this whole crisis as a diplomatic mission impossible. Take a listen to what Kofi Annan has to say about his resignation. The increase in militarization on the ground and the clear lack of unity in the Security Council have fundamentally changed the circumstances for the effective exercise of my role. At a time when we need, when the Syrian people desperately need action, there continues to be finger pointing and name calling in the Security Council. And uh, Kofi, Annan, Kofi Annan's words are really uh, showing to be true because we're already hearing from the United States saying that his resignation, his departure from the post underlines, it turns out, Russia's and China's failure to participate appropriately in uh, supporting the Syria action. But the gist of the story here is, Kevin, uh, that uh, basically um, Russia, we have heard from Russia say that, uh, look, all of the countries signed up for trying to make sure that both sides of the on the conflict sit down for talks and negotiations but in reality behind closed doors Russia has been uh, it's been said that behind closed doors it's important to just not pretend and uh, say this on paper but also make sure you're not supporting any specific side of the conflict and we have seen developments of that sort take place in the Syrian crisis and uh, this is something that Russia has been saying is unacceptable and getting in the way of solving the conflict take a listen to what the the Russia's ambassador to the Russia's ambassador to the UN had to say earlier today. Unfortunately, I think one of the reasons uh, that uh, Mr. Tannen's efforts uh, have encountered so many difficulties is that uh, his appeal for no further militarization of the conflict, uh, which he uh, started out with as he uh, came in first here to New York, was not really heeded by uh, a number of influential members of the international community. So we have uh, a rather strange situation. Uh, when some countries who are uh, like uh, uh, talking, uh, expressing their regret about uh, violence uh, in, in Syria are at the same time those countries who are providing weapons uh, uh, almost openly uh, to the armed opposition groups. Well, Kofi Annan leaves behind a six-point six peace plan, and we do know already that Ban Ki-moon is already in negotiations with the Arab League, trying to find a successor for Annan. We do not know yet who that person is going to be, and we will have to wait and see whether this, uh, this new uh, negotiator will stick with Annan's plan or find something completely different. We do know that many experts have dubbed the plan unrealistic and saying that, in, in that that's why it didn't work out. But for the, for the month, Kofi Annan will be around, and we have heard from uh, leaders say that they hope this month will be productive in his work still. Uh, but we do know, of course, that many have uh, expressed regret, including the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Indeed, Anastasia Cherkina, thanks for bringing us the view there from New York. Appreciate it. Well, I spoke a bit earlier to journalist Neil Clark. He believes Western nations never backed Kofi Annan's peace plan, and they're solely to blame for the ongoing bloodshed. Kofi Annan has worked tirelessly to try to bring peace to Syria. But unfortunately, he's been undermined every step of the way by the, the, the Western powers, basically, who don't want to see a peaceful solution to this crisis. And we can't really understand what's going on until we realize that, that 
Russia and China have fully supported Kofi Annan. If we, if we think back to point one of his peace plan, was that there would be a Syrian-led solution to this crisis. Well, what, what have the West been doing? They, they've been backing rebels all the way along. The key players in all of this are the US and its allies, because they're the ones stoking the fires. Uh, you know, we had a vote back in February for a democratic constitution in Syria. 89% of Syrians voted yes to, to free elections. There were elections in May. So there is a framework for solving this peaceably. We don't need violence in Syria. There's no reason. But of course, America wants a violent regime change. All they care about is toppling President Assad. And that's what's causing the bloodshed. So let's make no mistake about this. You know, the, the, the responsibility for the bloodshed that's going on now, the tragic bloodshed, lies with the US and its allies.